Without a shadow of doubt. Fantastic. Let me bring Justice Joaquin Dongo into this conversation as well. You will go down in history as for many things, but the Sexual Offenses Act is one of them. Walk us through the process of making it a reality, and, and I wonder for how long that idea percolated in your mind. What doubts did you face? What challenges did you endure before it became a reality? Well, thank you. Um, somebody once asked me, what will be on my gravestone if I was to die? And I think my et epitaph should say that here lies Njoki Ndungu and she left this world a safer place for women. Wonderful. For me, Wonderful. my focus um, has been on the safety of women and it has been informed by my own experience. I grew up in a home where there was domestic violence, surrounded by violence. But I also came to realize that there was violence everywhere, in the community, in all the places that were supposed to be safe spaces for girls and women. I remember at 12, getting a lift from a church elder who wanted to put his hand up my skirt. At 16, having to fight off one of my father's friends who was trying to grab my breast. At 20, walking in the streets of Nairobi and having somebody pinch my behind without my permission. At 36, having to deal I, with... I don't think that's funny. Those who are laughing, please don't do that. At 36, Carry on. as a senior officer at the African Union, having to deal with a boss who was sexually harassing me. All these things in spaces that where women are supposed to be safe and not happening just to me, but happening to other women and girls, that for every 12-year-old girl, in, you know, this is what life looks like for every 16-year-old girl. And I found my voice. And I found my voice that day when I was walking down Kimathi Street and somebody tried to touch my behind and something snapped. And I found myself chasing him down the street. And I said, I wanted to touch him too. And he took off, almost, <laughs> he was almost hit by a bus. And that day I found my voice, never to be touched again, never to be abused again. And I wanted to give that voice to other women and girls. It's something that I still do today. Wow. Coming to how I then um, found myself in a position as a member of parliament to do that for women mm -hmm. is, I think, a, you know, a matter of you know, everybody knows I got into parliament and I did it. But people used to ask me, what drives you to do that? So is it fear? The fear that it would happen to me or to others? Is it anger? That I'm so angry that this happens? But I think that the truth of the matter is, it was because it was right. And I think that leadership is about doing things when you feel that it is right. And that is what has informed my journey. Um, T.D. Jakes said yesterday that when you're a leader, that some of the work you do and some of the work, it's laborious and it can be bloody and it's sweaty and it's difficult. And the process of the Sexual Offences Act was like that. And some of the other work I've done around women's rights issues. But look what it gives birth to. It gives birth to a law that protects women. It gives, law to, it gives birth to a law that gives women maternity leave. And therefore, I stand here still saying there's still a lot more work to be done. But so long as I stand by what is right, that is what leadership should be like. Absolutely amazing. You've, Joki, you've made